Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G and it's Monday, May 1st. Tesla's very own CCS adapter was spotted charging at a Model Y station at over 200 kilowatts, a first for the Tesla exclusive adapter. While the launch of the Model 3 and Supercharger version 3 in Europe came, Tesla switched their main charging standard to CCS. This left Tesla owners in North America unable to take advantage of the growing third-party networks that use the CCS standard, such as Electrify America. In 2020, Tesla announced that an adapter would be coming, but for some reason they only made it available in Korea. When launching the $250 adapter overseas, they said that it was rated for 150 kilowatts. But now, a Model Y owner who imported the adapter managed to charge it at 205 using an EVgo station. Hopefully, it means that Tesla might actually be closer to launching the adapter here in North America. The Tesla owner who did this demonstration also made a useful guide for importing your own. You can find a link to it on our site, electrek.co. As first deliveries of Ford's highly anticipated F-150 Lightning begin this week, the American automaker has announced the all-electric pickup will arrive with more horsepower and a higher payload capacity than originally promised. With the standard range battery, it was originally announced with 426 horsepower and 2,000 pounds of payload capacity. But now this battery size gets a bump to 452 horsepower and 2,235 pounds of payload capacity. The extended range battery size also gains the payload capacity of 2,335 pounds, but they also get a horsepower ticked up to 17 ponies rated for 580 horsepower as of now. On top of all this, 2022 Ford Lightning deliveries will arrive with Intelligent Range, a cloud-connected data service that compares your truck's energy use against a multitude of sources. This Ford exclusive technology takes into account driving conditions like speed and traffic, ambient temperature, climate control in the EV, the owner's specific driving habits, and even Ford trucks that have towed on similar roads with similar trailers. Ford has confirmed the price of its home integration system, which enables the F-150 truck to power your home in case of an outage. 3,895 big ones before installation. When Ford unveiled the Lightning, one of the features that created the most buzz was, was support for bi-directional charging. The home unit was unveiled in March, costing $1,310, a pretty good price for the 80 amperage of power that it has. However, it also needs to be combined with Ford's home integration unit system. The prices are adding up, although owners of the extended range battery do get the charge station with their purchase. The standard range customers, they have to pay $5,200 worth of hardware plus installation to take advantage of this feature. It does replace a home battery pack system, which itself can be quite expensive, so it's not a total loss. According to a recent report from Electrify America, it delivered 1.45 million charging sessions in the year of 2021. That's over five times what they did in the previous year, 268,000. Electrify America currently operates about 800 charging stations with 3,500 individual chargers. The speeds range from 150 to 350 kilowatts. The company has already shared plans to double their network in the U.S. by 2026, expanding to about 10,000 chargers across 1,800 stations. The U.S. Department of Energy announced a new $3 billion program going toward battery manufacturing and supply chain to support the transition to electric vehicles. The money is coming from the giant infrastructure bill from last year, which also included $7.5 billion for electric transit vehicles and another $7.5 for electric vehicle charging infrastructure. The new battery programs will include funding for battery materials processing and battery manufacturing, electric drive vehicle battery recycling and second life applications, and a national blueprint for lithium batteries. In today's community comment, Davel says, Always a great show. She's right. Dress for success. Sometimes we wear our beaters while working on our vehicles. For your show, we like to see success. And you are. Thanks for the up-to-the-minute electric news, Mike E.G. Thank you for your words of support, Davel. Coming this June, I'm actually headed to a Cadillac media event, and the big cheese at Electrek told me to bring a suit. Aside from COVID, I rarely wore a suit in the first place. In the cycling industry from which I came, the polo shirt is considered dress-up, 
and a button down would be considered a tuxedo. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.